so, so to to bias to be a Satan Sweden to be us to be that's your last day Eliasson good luck <laughs>
so in 2012 they employed me. Okay. Um, and yeah, I've been working with them, and so I'm a partner since like two years back. Uh, so it's you. just been sort of following following those guys. Good for you. And they're yeah. So so now there's four of us, and we just like. We're music lovers and music geeks that just travel the world with laptops and phones, sorting, shit, awesome. sorting shit out. How awesome. But, but then I did a lot of stage managing. So tour managing, we, so we as a company, we handle everything for Europe. Okay. Fun and countdown. Sure. Yeah. Since uh, 2004. So Stefan, my colleague, has been their TM since 2004. And I started traveling with them in 2018 when their production became a little bit bigger and he needed a, sta a stage manager and an assistant. And I sometimes also do tour managing for them whenever he can. So we're sort of a team, we're very like, sometimes I tour manage, sometimes he, mostly he does it. Um, but that's how I got into the touring part of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, was that a hard transition to get into touring? Saturday? No, because I've done so many stage managing. So I met sure. so many tour managers, so I sort of knew how they wanted it. Yeah. So I think that's what makes, I would like to say that's what makes me a good tour manager. Sure. Because I've been on the other end so yeah. much, so I know how to, you know, don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tour manager, production manager. What's the difference? So, I mean, it's, so... The production manager part on this band isn't a, isn't a whole lot. Sure. Because that's more like figuring out, okay, so what gear do we need? How do we want to present ourselves on stage? Yeah. What do we need to get in order? And they had like a very fixed idea on how they did stuff. It was more like, okay, so what do we need to add to that to sort of be more self-contained, yeah. technical-wise, as a tour? And there I worked a lot with Josef because it's mostly, so we only travel with a sound guy and a, ba and a backline guy and me, and someone selling merch. Yeah. That's, that's the whole crew. So we're a very small, tight band. And the band helps b setting up their own stuff and everything. So yeah. it's very small, it's very yeah, family. Um, yeah, family operation. Um, so production-wise, it was quite easy. It was like, okay, so which desk are, do we want to travel yeah. with? Do we, what do we need there? That was fairly easy. Yeah. And then it's mostly talking to the venues, like preparing, like, you know, writing the rider, asking the right questions for the venues, like, do you have this and this and this? Yep. We're pretty self-contained because that's how we like to do it, but we need some, like, we need a couple of stands and cables, yeah. basically. Then otherwise we travel w w with everything. Tour managing is more like, okay, so how do we make... So when I got into this project, the tour dates were already pretty much set. Okay. Um, so it was more like, okay, so how do we do the logistical part? Like, how do we travel? So I started with just, okay, finding the tour bus. That was the first thing that I got, that I got in, into. Um, and then it was, it's just routing and planning and booking hotels and figuring out, okay, so where do we need to stop so that the driver can, can take a rest, you yeah. know, yada, yada, all, all of those things. Um, so that's sort of the, the difference between, between the two. So I've heard it explained that uh, tour manager gets you to the venue, production manager is what you get inside the venue. Exactly. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, okay. pretty much. So which one do you find to be harder, the production manager or tour manager? Um, I know it's it, kind of tough at this level because it's a little bit smaller at this level. Exactly, here everything is sort of connected. Like sure. it's, the, this production is too small to have those roles separated. Yeah. Because my, I spend like, honestly, I spend like 15 minutes as a production manager once we're in here. Sure. Do you have this, this, this? Yes. Okay. Risers, how do we set everything up? Yep. Good. Then leave those guys setting it up. Then I go into tour managing. Like, okay, how do the Switch hats. <laughs> exactly. Look at dressing rooms, making sure that everybody gets fed, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, but I mean, I would say like, um, the difference in, I, I mean, I like doing them both. Okay. And it's fun when you get when you have a big production, you know, when you travel with lights and we have oh, like a ton of technicians and everything. Then the production manager part, of course, gets a lot bigger. Do you find uh, do you lean more towards tour manager or production manager? I mean, honestly, I love it both. I love the I love switching between the roles because I get bored. So well, let me ask you this: What do you think separates a good TM PM from a great one? I think honestly, it's reflecting on the people that you meet. So we're very much like, just say hi to everybody. Yeah. 
Just say hi to everybody. Back at Don't Be a Dick. <laughs> Back at Don't Be a Dick. And honestly, again, from my years as a stage manager, so many people go into this being dicks yeah. for absolutely no reason. Yeah. And I'm not sure if you just hate your job or you're doing it, doing it for so long, but yeah. I mean, I, I love live music. That's, that's what I do. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked every day to work with music, and especially a band like this, as, as you said. Man, uh, I gotta remind myself, I don't mean to interrupt yeah, yeah. you, that there are people who drive to work every single day that hate their job. Yeah, I know, right. I'm so blessed to do a job that like, I love. Yeah. And I can't believe we get paid to do yeah, this. Yeah, I know, it's, it's I know, right. pretty incredible, I know, right. actually. So, I mean, I'm just happy every day, and I like greet everybody with, with a smile, and that will get you so much further. And that's just, again, me as a stage manager. If you come to, up to me smiling and be a happy guy, of course I'm going to do the little extra to help you. Yeah. But if you're a dick, <laughs> screw you. Okay, so you are based in Sweden. Yes. You are here in America. Um, take me back to your first time coming from Sweden to America. Was it a pretty big cultural shock? Um, is it pretty similar I mean, operations from, besides, obviously, power is going to be different from that. But power is going to be different. Your standard operating procedures in Sweden to here, what was the, is it? So I think the biggest difference for me with the venues here is that they are usually staffed more. Like, oh, there is there's more people okay. working than it would be at a, at a regular venue okay. in Sweden or in Europe, even. Sure. Um, so I, I find it very easy to work here, actually. Okay. Because there is like, and I will like sometimes, okay, yeah, we have two sound guys in, and it's like, okay, we only need one, honestly, because we're pretty self-contained. Like, no, no, we're going to get you two. Okay. All right. That's cool. Uh, yeah. So that's, for me, the, the biggest difference. Like, staffing-wise, it's much more people involved here, sure. which makes it also a whole lot easier, of course. So how does somebody... <sighs> If there's somebody watching this that wants to be in your shoes one day, yeah. what advice would you give them to be able to be successful at this? I mean, just, I think you need to figure out why you, why you want to do it. Like, if, you, if, you're, if you're just out on, like, traveling and, and having fun, fun on the road with your friends, being the tour manager is not the part you want. Why is that? Because you're the parent, right? Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you just babysitter. Wanna, yeah, exactly. You're Trying a babysitter. Get the cats together exactly. on the bus. <laughs> exactly. So I'm first in the venue every day, lost out every day. Um, like, hey, someone forgot their jacket. You know, constantly sort of clean, cleaning up everybody. So it's not the sort of party posi position. Yeah. But. Again, so before I started working working with this, I was I worked in administration at various offices, you know, Excel spreadsheets and, and stuff like that, and that very much fits with my brain. So that I think that's also a reason why I'm good, a good tour manager yeah. because I can see flows and numbers yeah. and like structure. I'm very much like building structures that works and that you can repeat over and over again and like perfecting it. Like every day, the loadout should be five minutes shorter. <laughs> Like optimizing stuff. Yeah. That's just how who we who got loaded in five minutes. We could do three minutes this yeah, time. Exactly. Come, on, guys, minutes. Come on, guys, go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, that just yes, makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. I think the easiest position is honestly just finding so if you you're probably into into music, right? If if you if you want to do this. Otherwise, sure. why why would you? Yeah. So I mean, just just connect connect with your friends. That's how I started way way back, like before I started doing this professionally. I just helped my friends out. Okay, you have a band. Well, I'll travel along with you for free. I just okay. do stuff and just sort of learn the lingo of it. Like start as a stagehand. Like con contact the venues closest to you and just try to get stagehands to work there. Learn the lingo and learn and connect with people. I mean. I never I like I never studied anything to be here. I never like I, it's pure network, being a nice guy, getting recommendations. Yeah, and that I that has been my career for 15 years. So within your 15 years, looking back, what's been the highlight of that you look back and go, wow, that was. So special. honestly, this tour is is one of those big highlights. That's one of the things I want to do. Like, I want to tour manage a proper bus tour in the States for a long time. Yeah. That was one. I was in Japan this January. That was also one of those things. Take. Whenever you get to sort of that, 
with Europe, we played uh, Royal Albert Hall in London a couple yeah. of years ago. That's also one of those. Yes, whenever you get to those th those things, and I always try to figure out something that I want to do because that keeps you going forward yeah. and not like just being stuck doing the same thing over over and over again. What has you been your favorite venue in Europe? In Europe? Yeah. Um, Oh, so there's one called Zero One Three in Tilburg in the Netherlands. Okay. Which was when we were there, it was very new and fresh, and they just had like so many small ideas on how to improve stuff that I just I, I took half an hour just walking around the venue and took pictures and showed it to friends back home in Gothenburg who have venues and like you you should do this and was like that's brilliant. Wow. Just many small brilliant ideas such as like okay so in the middle of the night when you park the when you park the truck there it's parked inside a garage mm -hmm. like they built a proper garage for it you get the door code in advance punch it in oh cool slides open back in closes what's the next thing you see driver's bathroom and a shower right there right there for the, for the truck driver that's pretty cool like small things yeah right um and yes <laughs> Constantly like painted like signs and everything on the walls backstage with big arrows yeah. everywhere. People, big place. People didn't get lost because they realized that um, in like every intersection in the corridors, like here, people want to know which way the stage is. Lots of small signs everywhere. They had a Wi-Fi code on stickers, mm -hmm. so whenever like mm. people ask for the Wi-Fi code here, slap a sticker on there. Done. That's smart. Yeah, a lot of like small. Smart stuff. They they did a lot of their like power connections and stuff like that on one on a balcony on the stage, so they can drop down whatever oh. they need for that show. That's cool. And not having like a yeah. clutter of shit shit yeah. on, shit on the floor. Yeah, that's probably the the venue in Europe that I was okay. most Im impressed with. Okay. Um, so in your um, in your Pelican, yes. What you got in there? I have uh, I have a spare screen, okay, like a little 15-inch USB-C driven Durant screen, okay, uh, extra screen through my MacBook, so I can work on two screens at, at the same time because I'm so used to that at the office, yep. so I just like to do that on on tour uh, yep. as well. Uh, I have a printer, uh, small little little Canon uh, printer. Uh, what else do I have? I have an um, I'm a cleaning machine for in-ear head mm. headphones. Smart, like a small yep. little. People always, you know, forget that. Never bring it themselves. So yep. I, have, I have, I have one of those. Uh, yes, in general tools, okay, uh, and stuff. So I don't need to find some someone uh, someone at the venue. Like I have screwdrivers and pliers and, yeah. and, and you know whatever. <sighs> Shitload of sharpies. Weird stickers that I find every now and then that I just collect and like to slap on onto, 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 onto weird places. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Well, if people want to follow you and follow your career on social media, where can they follow you? So I'm Tobias Eliasson on, okay. on Instagram. Okay. I, po I try to post for every gig um, I do. Cool. Yeah. Or a Dirty Loops show near you. Or a Dirty you. Loops show. Yes. Man, thank for you sure. so much. Thank for your you so time. much. I really My pleasure. appreciate you. A few moments later. We're going to do a first. We have never done a tour bus tour. Tour bus tour? Tour bus tour? Tour bus tour. So we're going to do a dirty loops tour bus tour, but a, it's not going to be a dirty bus. It's going to be a dirty loops clean tour bus tour. Clean. -ish. Maybe not yeah. clean, but hopefully it's not too dirty, right? We'll see. We'll see? We'll see. All right. <laughs> Come with us. Bye. So welcome to the tour bus. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Okay. Um, explain the tour bus to people who may not, because it looks like an RV. It's not an RV. You're in a rolling can. Yes. With all of your best friends. It's a rolling sleepover, right? It's a rolling sleepover. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. But unlike an RV, you're going to have a bunch of sleeping quarters because you have yeah. how, many, how many people for this? So we have eight people living on the bus plus the driver. Okay. Um, and we can, the bus in itself can, well, it has a, it, you can set it up in different ways. Sure. Right? So it has 12 uh, sleeping bunks. So we have plenty, plenty more spare, which is nice because then you get young Junk bunk. bunk. Exactly. A young bunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right now we're in the front, we're in the front lounge, right? Yep. And then it also has a back lounge. Okay. So what we have done a little bit different is that the back lounge on this bus is actually also a sleeping quarter. 
oh, cool. Friona, our, our singer. Okay. So that he can sort of get the temperature just that he wants to sort of help help his voice, basically. So he got his own little, little quarter back there. Okay. So we only have one part lounge, not two. So we got driver right here. Driver right here. And then we have, is the, is this pneumatic or is it a pole one? No, so he, he can close whenever we annoy, oh, okay. annoy, annoy, him, annoy, annoy him too much. Okay, got and, it. And especially during the night because otherwise it re reflects in his windshield and everything. Um, cup and cup, wow. A couple cool rules on the bus is shoes. Yes, so this is apparently, so we're Swedish, right? Yes. So we take our shoes off at the bus. You do? Yes. In the bus? In the bus. You are brave people. <laughs> I couldn't do it. No, no shoes off. Uh, we got slippers for everybody. Oh, so you actually, so you're not barefoot? No. Okay. No, so slippers for everybody. No, that's great. Uh, just to not pull dirt in, you know, and that's sure. That's apparently not how you do it in the States. No. 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 But Some people go barefoot. I thought that's what you guys are doing. I was no, like, no, gross, no. No, 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 but no shoes. On, on the bus. It's a Swedish team, apparently. So this is where you guys all are hanging out when you're yeah. going down the road? Exactly. So we're all hanging out here, right here. This is the front lounge. We got TV, Xbox, Apple TV, stuff like that. And this one, so now it's in a like parked position. Sometimes when we park uh, at a venue, which we're not doing directly today, this whole part slides out. Yeah. So that this room becomes even bigger, which is nice. That's a very American thing. So tour buses in Europe don't have that. No, thing. you got the big ones. We though. got the big ones. You got we the double deckers. We got double deckers. Yeah, those so are cool. So we have cool. all of the sleeping sleeping compartments on top. Yeah, those are cool. Those are very cool. No, no. As a slide out is a new thing for us. And when it slide it out the first time, like, oh my god, it's, it's so cool. It's a lot of space. It's huge. It's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say so. You get a bathroom over here. Yes, correct. Exact, exactly. So directly, so we have sort of our kitchen area. Um, with you know, what's your go-to snack? I like Doritos uh, a lot, and you have even more flavors over here if we don't get in Europe. Uh, so, yes. Okay. But uh, and we're pretty stocked, so you should know about Dirty Loops that they they're not a party band. They're not heavy drinkers or yeah. or everything. And when I just put together what I felt was like a standard tour rider for them, the first response was like, Tobias, who's gonna drink all of these beers? Like. There's eight of us and twelve beers. That's like that's like a ton. That's inhuman. Who's gonna? Well, I. Oh, oh, all right, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> so right now we're actually cutting down because we're pretty. Yeah. Pretty stocked. Ooh, all the good snacks. All of, all of the good snacks, and of course, cooler. Cool. Um, freezer is this a cool thing? Also, not in Europe. You no, know, never get a, never get a freezer. Do you guys have microwaves? Microwaves, yes. Okay. Microwaves, coffee machines, toaster, everything like that. But freezer, it's a new thing. And your bathroom is back there. The bathroom is back there. Okay. Exactly. Which brings me to the almost most <laughs> important rule on tour is don't do number two on the bus. No number two on the bus. No number two on the bus. Yes. Yes. Which uh, which bunk do you prefer? So I'm over here. Oh, look at that. Let me get out of the way. For you. All right. So, I like middle. This is actually my side. Middle, pass. Middle, no. middle driver side. This is the one I like. All right. Yeah, but middle in the front. I have sort of an unspoken. So, I, I assigned bunks. Do you? These guys, yes. Oh, okay, smart. Um, only because I like band in the back crew in the front. That's smart. That way we can sort of figure out stuff without bothering them okay. too much. Then again, this is a very like family ori oriented band. Yeah. So, you know, but otherwise I like to give the band their privacy in the back as much as possible. That's smart. Yeah. Uh, there is a couple cool different features that you have on tours. You've got something called condo bunks as well. You can take these and rise these up, exactly. and then you have the whole space here. Yeah. And then, if you're lucky, you can also do a junk bunk. Yes. Or a junk bunk, as you call it. Yeah. Junk. Junk bunk. Junk bunk. Yeah. Junk bunk. Yeah. Which you can take all your stuff and store in yeah, there, exactly. depending on how many people. Yeah. Yeah. So we're actually six people in total on twelve beds. So That's everybody fantastic. has their own. Junk bunk. Spare bunk. That's which, awesome. Which is very luxurious. 
<laughs> and then you've got back there, which I'm sure we're not going to go into. No, so back there we have the, the, the other lounge, which again is a singer's uh, own bedroom. We have a bathroom and we have a shower. Oh, cool. <coughs> Sorry. And shower is also a thing that I never experienced on, on a bus before. Have you used it? No. <laughs> no, no, says, no. No. No one has used it yet. Again, yes, for like, you're going to run out of water. Sure. Really quickly. But sure. we have it for emergency when someone, you know, spills coffee over it or some sort. Do you guys do what we do? Put all the guitars in there? So what I did do is that I took Henrik's empty bass case, filled it with beer, and left it in his bunk. Because I felt like it. Uh, <laughs> So that is now in the shower. Okay. So that's our portable go-to. If we need beer anywhere, we can just grab the best case. So I love it. Food. I love it. Well, there you go, guys. There's yeah. a simple tour of a tour bus. Um, it's maybe not as exciting as you may think, but uh, this is your rolling can where everybody lives and sleeps and stays together. So. I'm here with Joseph Pearson. Joseph Pearson is front of house for Dirty Loops. Yes, he is. I'm so excited about this because I love this band, and I've said this a bunch of times today, but I love this band. So what we're gonna do, we got a bunch of stuff going on around us, so we're gonna start up on stage and then come to, uh, come to front of house. So come with us, we'll start up there. Here's the heart of everything, okay. the stage box. So let's start off with this. Yep. How many members with the band? In the band, there are three in the band plus an additional key player. Okay. Yep. There are three, also four amazing, amazing musicians. With this, there's going to be some I know, amazing equipment with it. So walk me through what we got going on. Now you got a drummer, you got two keyboard players and a bass player, correct? Exactly. Okay. Can, we, can you walk me through some of it? Yeah, sure. Awesome. So drums? Yes. Cool. Got a DW here. What yes. are we using for microphones? So for microphones, uh, we start with the channel one. We have a kick out. It's a <laughs> it's a sure Beta 52. Yep. And uh, in addition to that, we have a kick in. That's a sure Beta 91. 91. Okay. 91A. Uh, and then for snare, we're using a sure Beta 57A. I love it. You got classic 57s on. Yes. Oh, 57 on that that, Except snare. for the snare two, that's a SM57. Oh, beta SM, yes, yeah, I exactly. see that now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the and bottom? Then we have a Telefunken on the M80? snare bottom. No, M82? Actually, not sure which model that Telefunken is. Telefunken on the bottom, who cares? Yeah, uh, the snare bottom. And then, what else we got? Hat? Hat is a Shure uh, Beta 181. Great microphone. I love it. Great love microphone. It. Love it on percussion and stuff. And then we've got some more shares for your uh, overheads. Yes, uh, the KSM 141 in uh, cardioid mode. Um, are you using any triggers on this no. at all? Okay. Nothing. I love it. Mm. It okay. hits so hard. So <laughs> we get the tra we get the transients anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you did you, did you spec this uh, these mics are these yours or did you just kind of just come into this? No. So. Um, we're two engineers going on this w with their loops usually. Sure. So it's me and his, uh, Marcus Anderson. Yeah. Uh, so he um, so he spec the the tom mics, uh, the DPA forty nine nines. Had a quite a, a bit different uh, setup with other um, with the overheads and uh, snare and stuff. Yeah. So I just changed to what I'm more comfortable with. Sure. Like uh, sonically, uh, but then we just uh, keep the forty nine nines. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. But I'm good with those. I love them. What's that? This rack. Yes, where's the yes. rack? So, RF. In the bottom, we have a stage box, uh, uh, Allen Heath, oh. uh, CDM48. So, interesting. That goes, so, that's for all inputs on stage. Um, from that, as I'm running another brand on the front house, yeah, uh, the I've... Waves Emotion LV1. Yep. Uh, so, we insert a um, Waves card to that, so so I can do the waves thing on my end. Interesting. And okay. also, as Alan Heath has a function, the 
the ME mixers. Yeah. Uh, so they do all the whole band does their own monitor. So everyone gets one of these mixers, the ME ones. So they can get come over here for a second. This is not typical that you normally see a, D, uh, a uh, CDM48 with an Allen and Heath console, but he has the Waves card in here to be able to use for the LV1, yep. which is kind of cool, honestly, that you're doing that. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you guys saw that. Yeah. Um, and then you said you're using the ME ones over here? Yes, exactly. So. As the Allen Heath system has their the monitor, uh, the, the ME1 system, um, they can have up to 40 channels direct out yeah. with ME1. Yeah. So we just get the whole band on these mixers. Yeah. Uh, so they, so the drummer and our second keyboard player, uh, they just listen to the headphone amps directly. Okay. But for the bass player and our lead uh, vocal and keys. Um, they actually go out of the mixer's analog and then to our in-ear transmitter. So we have, we're using two channels of, yeah. of wireless transmitter for in-ears. Okay. Uh, so they can just walk around on stage. Uh, just PSM 1000s? PSM 1000s, yes, exactly. And then so, these two are they just redundant? Yeah, no, those are just uh, spares. spares. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and we're for wireless mics, and I see the Axiant over here as well. Yeah, Axiant Digital. So we have one that we are using now, and then we, we carry one spare also. So we carry spare on all wireless stuff. I see he's got some fractal going on here. Exactly. That is beautiful, by he's the way. He's a great uh, fractal fan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, EBS fan as well, I can tell. Uh, sponsored, yes. Yep. 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 Exactly. Cool. Um, and then we got... Oh, I was going to say the fractal, but he's already got the fractal. This is this. this yeah, is so that's it. This. this is just a yeah. controller for the for the Axifix uh, three. Okay. And then he has some additional uh, pedals that I actually don't know exactly what they're doing. It's the but, magic uh, dust. Yeah. Well, I would say that Hendrik is the magic dust. Yes, he is. Yes, yes, the he fingers. Is. Yes. But uh, yeah, um, he's. Um, He's very good at, at really dialing in uh, the, the his, his sound, yeah, tone yeah. and everything, yeah. So um, now whatever do you, he does there, I'm good. You go do you do any miking? You go direct, or do you do both? No, we do um, we we do uh, direct from the Axifix. Okay. From here, so okay. it goes wireless uh, into his pedal board to the Axifix. Okay. And then direct out. Is he there. having any stage noise come out of? He has that also, yeah, um, sometimes, depending on the stage. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you walk us through maybe the keyboards? There's a lot of keyboards. Yeah, sure. Let's start up here. Yeah. Right. So, uh, the lead vocal uh, and keyboard player, Jonah. Uh, typically, um, on, well, on, on this tour, he actually goes with two uh, keyboards. Okay. Um, Usually we uh, we go with the Core Chronos 2. Okay. Um, and now he's uh, gone over to the Nautilus. So this is actually new for for this tour. Okay. And then we added up um, added our uh, the Core Grand Stage, also. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, just and just come kind of stereo out for both of these. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Are uh, all your keyboard stereos? Yeah, we. That's a lot of channels. Thing. Yeah, but who likes mono? I so, I typically will do keyboards in mono. Really? Uh, granted, it's a lot of the church yeah. stuff I've done. Yeah. Do you find yeah. a, a huge difference in doing the stereo versus mono? Well, since we are on ears only, that makes more okay. sense for us. Okay. Yeah. I, so I see that. it would I be see so. That. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, you need the spread, I would say. Yeah. Uh, for that, um, or the like stereo width. Okay. Um, yeah. So those keys are for him. And then we have, uh, for the second keyboard player, um, he's running the Yamaha Mod X7 here. Um, and also the Nautilus, 
so they kind of have some of the same sounds, uh, piano yeah. sounds. But he's running that one into the Yamaha, so it's um, so it's only a, a, a stereo that we get from these two in total. Got it. So out from that into that, and then he ha does a vocoder uh, from this mic to this, and then directly from that. Is that what this is? Uh, no, that is actually uh, some additional tracks that we're running on. Some. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's cool. uh, tracks and uh, click. Okay, running from that. Yep. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's tough to like, especially for clubs this size, to emulate entire, you know, uh, songs without using some sort of some add-ons. It's really. Uh, I mean, yeah. the, if this goes down, it's still going to sound uh, exactly the same. Yeah, because it's. Uh, a very uh, common question is, do they really play loud uh, live? Yeah, they do. I'm really looking forward to, yep. to, to seeing this in live. Uh, okay. Yep. That's pretty much everything up here, correct? Yeah, I think so. Except for the bases. I mean, those are some beautiful bases, by the way. Yeah, and actually, and that all, I think both of them are signature bases from uh, Madison bases in Sweden. That are made uh, especially for Henrik. Yeah. Also. Oh, I love the color on that and yeah. the wood. My gosh, man! And he's also um, Henrik. Also has a he has a sponsorship with uh, what's it called the DR strings. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he he has an, his own model of strings. Of course he does. Um, a custom version, and I think it's a. Three gigs back, he got a new set that's uh, never been played live before. But he's the first one. Uh, we, uh, I, th we're, I think we're using them tonight as, as well, but it it's, uh, makes a lot of difference. So, uh, yeah. Do you want to know what separates a bass from a really, really good bass? Come here. See how the frets are a little bit uh, wavy in there? Interesting, huh? But really, that's set up for uh, tuning, correct? Yeah. So, um, I don't remember the exact word if it's uh, um, true frets or what's it called. Uh, so, it's, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah. We're hmm. getting the exact note, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. All right, do you want to do a little, maybe a little bit of front of house? Sure. Cool. Normally, this is where I talk about the console a bit. Um, we'll get to that. There's a few cool things I want to touch on. But before <coughs> before I get into this, um, I want to learn a little bit about you. What got you into doing sound? So, um, I think I was around 13. Um, I was... My, well, my, my brothers were quite active doing sound, um, both like in, in a bit of a studio and also like local radio. Okay. So I, I, DJs? I went, no, no, uh, more like a really local, uh, uh, like a very small radio station. I uh, did that from a, sent from a church. Uh, so like um, they were playing uh, stuff like. Uh, what was out there? Uh, DC Talk, News Post, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, Jesus Freak. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so I went with them, uh, and sat behind them and watched what they were doing and um, got me interested in, in doing sound like them. Uh, and the church, uh, I, I was also in that, in that church then. Uh, so we had, we had, um, I mean, jazz bands, it was uh, choirs, rock bands, it was quite a variety yeah. of different kind of music. Yeah. So, And there weren't that many engineers. Uh, so you really had the opportunity to do everything and do mistakes and learn, do new mistakes, learn and, and, and evolve. Yeah. Uh, so that's how we started. And then I think that was in high school, um, uh, I got to know more and more people playing in other churches or doing local clubs, stuff like that. So I, I almost every weekend went doing sound for somebody. A church, church is such a fantastic yeah. way to start. Yeah, it Be really best is. Place. Yeah, best place, really. Yeah. 
uh, could be harsh, but uh, yeah, no, for, for me it was a great, great wonderful, yeah. wonderful, yeah. Um, so that's how I started, and uh, after that I went to a local rental company, uh, started out there. Smart. Um, I um, <laughs> I studied uh, um, economics in high school, so when I went there they thought, oh crap, we're gonna have somebody who likes numbers and doesn't know any audio or stuff. Yeah. So they were like, okay, should we just get rid of him very quickly? <laughs> um, but then they had, um, I think there was somebody that w was uh, went sick that week and uh, Ryan Adams were, was coming in um, to town doing a, like a 500, 500 cap uh, venue. Yeah. And okay, w we need somebody to babysit uh, that front of house guy. Okay. We, we, let's send Joseph. Okay. What? Well, what? Well, you got your chance. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and from that, I just um, I, I got to work there. That's uh, cool. So it, it uh, yeah, it went fine. So how'd you go from there to getting on tour uh, with these guys? Okay. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Well. Uh, so from there, um, um, I I like doing system tech. System okay. design. Okay, yeah. Um, and we had a lot of acoustic stuff. So I really tried to learn everything about yeah. the brand, how, how, how the philosophy, how they work and stuff. And um, also uh, came into learning about mayor sound and then DMB. Yep. And just learning more and more on philosophies. Yeah. So doing more and more system tech. Yeah. Uh, and from that, I guess I. When well, somebody needed a monitor engineer. Okay. And I thought, okay, I, I could, I could do that. Yeah. And then uh, somebody needed a front of house guy. Yeah, sure, I can, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, and if, and I guess just from that, um, it just evolved. And uh, then I met these guys for, uh, through a friend who does backline. Um, they needed an additional engineer yeah. for a tour uh, ten years back. Uh, so just went there, said hi, and then we, uh, then me, me, Marcus, and another guy uh, shared the, the whole tour. There was Europe, North America, and uh, Asia. Do you find the culture in Europe different than the culture in America in terms of mixing engineers and communities, or is this, do you find it the same? I would say uh, in the here it's a bit more open. Okay. Uh, it's but it's also in con country based. Also, yeah. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Sure. So the, and also on the, the the sonic side, how um, what, what's a what's a typical like nor uh, a Scandinavian mix or yeah. what's a, a southern Euro European mix or East European mix or yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I would say that. Um, uh, but overall, it's a more uh, open climate here in the States. Okay. No. Okay. So I like it. That's awesome. Now, now um, it's for this package, did you design much of this or is this something that you guys came up with together? So, um, I, uh, I'm going to... Um, do this uh, politically correct. Uh, sure. I I prefer to do uh, this on the wave system, okay. so I chose to go with the waves. Okay. For this tour, it's it's a cool little setup. This is the yep. first this is the first one that we've done with a LV1 setup, mm -hmm. and I love how yours it will actually fold in. You've yep. got this whole little. It's a it, it, it's it's tough, especially playing overseas because yep. you can't necessarily take your huge console with you unless yep. you're a major band so this is a really cool way to do it yep. uh and it's funny because a lot of these interviews i ask like are you using waves yep. are you using uad yep. so your answer obviously are you using waves yes yeah, you yeah, are yeah yeah um so can you tell me a little bit about this um and how it differentiates maybe from regular consoles or and how, also how it's the same yep so basically either if if you're running digital at all today you still have a computer inside. Yes. Some kind of DSP processing. So it's still the same. Uh, for this is a more uh, modular uh, way of doing it. So you could add DSP, whatever. So in, 
in, in the wave system, um, they have something called, well, you have servers and you have racks. You can add different kinds of stage boxes uh, for your in and outs, and you can add uh, processing power with DSPs. So uh, I'm running their, uh, their custom-made computer for this. It's called the Exascope. Okay. And then the server who do, that does all the sound, uh, called this, um, the SoundGrid Extreme C server. So does it come with the SoundGrid server? No. So you ha no no you have to just um, there's a you have to you buy these as, as a okay. separate yeah and then you um, uh, then you add like what what kind of plugins you want to use sure. with the system with the Emotion LV1 you get uh, you get three typical uh, plugins uh, that are, that is always included. So it's a, a filter plugin. You have a EQ plugin, and then you have a dynamic plugin. Okay. Uh, stuff like that. And I actually use that on uh, quite a lot of, of things uh, we're running. Sure. Uh, I've added. Uh, I have some SSL gene channel strips. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a Pushile, uh, um, a Fairchild um, stereo compressor. Uh, and uh, DBX 160. Okay. Um, kind of it, actually. Yeah. That I'm added to the system. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not console du jour, but your PA du jour. So you're kind of walking into any sort of PA that you go into. What's your tuning process? Are you, do you do a song? Do you do white noise? Um, and each one of these would be drastically different. How do yeah. you handle that? So for for this tour, um, I I play a few songs uh, that I know, yeah, uh, and and tune them with with a, a master EQ, yeah, uh, and I often go through the sys with the system tech uh, the house just to see what they've done with the system, sure, just to know, sure. Uh, uh, that we're not uh, working against each other yeah. uh, with the system. Um, um, and if I feel like I, I, I listen to uh, Pink Noise yeah. as well. I think that's it's a, a very good point that you talked about. A lot of engineers will come in very hot and heavy towards the house guys when they're your friends. They're going to help you out with it. So don't necessarily work directly against them. Yep. Work with them. This is my first time in the venue, so I have to assume that a house in-house person knows the room better than I do. Yeah, knows the system better than I do. Even if I I played in it before, yeah, it's still in this room that I've never been in. Yeah, so I have to, in some way, <laughs> I mean, uh, put some confidence in them. Yeah, uh, and tr trust in them. With a band that is this dynamic and is this good, it could easily be chaotic and a mess going on because there's so much stuff happening at once. How do you find that balance and what's your approach to mixing to be able to highlight the good stuff, uh, but also not make it sound like craziness going on? Uh, so there is a lot of things going on. Yeah. Uh, and that's the most fun part. I, mm. it, um, I can't really like make one a snapshot for each song. I need to go with faders all the time. Are do they are they do they jam a lot and, and do a lot of like different stuff each night or is it pretty consistent? They're pretty consistent. Okay, okay. But, Sorry, keep but, going. But you but, but, but you kinda need to be on the on yeah. show still. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but uh, I I kinda mix the whole thing. Uh, but you can have an idea of kind of what's coming next to yeah, be able exactly. to ride so with I, that. Yeah. I, I I do have snapshots for every song for the start. Sure. Yeah, so Audience often know how sonically or the ba the balance how every song starts. Yeah. So we try to s have something to to uh, start start from, and, and from that then uh, start mixing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with having so many keyboard players, well, two big keyboard, two keyboard players, so many keys, and also a bass player, a drummer, uh, and no guitar. How do you make it not step all over each other? So they were quite good at not doing the same thing. Okay. Uh, leaving room for each other. 
uh, yeah. in, in one way. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so they, um, so as I mentioned before, um, the the uh, Jonah play lead uh, lead keys, yeah. and uh, jo- Jonathan who does the second key, uh, they can alternate and do from their from their uh, from the Nautilus. Yeah. Uh, they may have the same sound, but they they um, uh, play uh, each at a time during one song. Yeah. Uh, and uh, skip to another sound and do add-ons okay. and stuff like that. So, so and, and since the, that is very consistent, also, okay. I mean, they, uh, I don't even want to guess how many times they switch sounds uh, or patches yeah. uh, during one song. Sometimes is uh, it is that hard to uh, to mix to, or do you kind of keep those pretty flat? How do you? Uh, uh, it takes some EQ and, yeah. and def- definitely because uh, there's some faders. drastic differences between each ones. Correct? Yeah, but they're um, since they're going on ears and they also hear if so- something uh, sticks out. Yeah, uh, th- they kind of dial in the le- the levels yeah. really. Um, so I would say that's okay. Okay. No. Uh, any cool tricks on your sleeve you're doing in here in terms of? Ducking, crazy compre- parallel compressions, or any sort of cool effects? <laughs> no, well, um, effects-wise, I. The, some people asked about the drum reverbs. Sure. That I do, um, during the tour. Uh, so I use two reverbs for snare and two for uh, toms. Okay. So Same or different ones? Different ones. Okay. So one is a, more like a... Um, something adding to the drum, um, and the second one is uh, more like uh, giving it a '80s kind of vibe yeah. for, for some songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's very easy for depending also on the venue and and what kind of uh, I would say uh, what kind of uh, speaker setup you have or sure. the brand. Uh, Sometimes it's just so easy just uh, punching it in and see how okay yeah. how does this verb actually work now. Yeah in this room with yeah. the, that system. And it's just, yeah, d- don't have to do that much, just add it on. So there is uh, a young engineer that's watching this that wants to be in your shoes one day. What advice would you give them? There's no really right and wrongs uh, m- mixing. It's, I mean, you sure. have to have a goal. Sure. Uh, listen to music uh, and, tr- and uh, uh, see if you can try to, uh, like uh, uh, we make some kind of the the, the sound or the the verbs or something. Yeah. I mean, it's in, uh, um, if you can find, I guess, uh, online videos or t- talk to other engineers. Yeah. What do they do? Uh, otherwise, uh, starting doing live sound for me, it was learning mic placement. That's good. Definitely mic placement. Yeah. And I'm very glad that I started doing a lot of system engineering. Yeah. Understanding how systems work and yeah. uh, crossovers. Yeah. Uh, it makes my job very much easier. Oh, now. absolutely. Yeah. What is something that you wish you knew starting off that you know now? Or something you would tell yourself in the very beginning of starting this whole... Um, going into that rental house. I mean, going... Yeah. Um, uh, so f- from people I start work with, it was almost like doing this is working with uh, uh, rocket science, or doing mm. uh, it was more. It, it was uh, for for some people it was more serious in doing research for for finding a cure for cancer. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> s- s- stop with that. Just uh, have fun, enjoy, yeah. and uh, and uh, t- take everything w- one step at a time. I love that. Yeah. Who are uh, some of the mentors that you have, the people that you look up to? Um, there was a guy, he's unfortunately not a right now, okay. but uh, uh, Andrew, Stone, uh, Andrew Stone. Okay. Um, uh, he was a great mentor, uh, but he, uh, the way, not only the, the way he was mixing, mm. it was uh, the way of working with people. Sure. Oh, that's good. Uh, that was uh, so inspiring for me. Yeah. Um, I would say. Otherwise, I mean, 
You got you got Pooch. Um, uh, Scoville. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, j just hear them uh, yeah. talk about how, how well where they started and yeah. how. Yeah, what what kind of direction they've taken with yeah. their their profession? Absolutely. I mean, uh, just get a a bit of that for everyone. Yeah. I mean, everything helps. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, if people want to follow you and follow your career, where can they where can they follow you? Uh, that would be on Instagram, uh, okay. Joseph Pearson. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, man, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, they can find you guys can find them there or a dirty little dirty. Duty Loops show near you. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate you. Nice.